my name is Olivia. Thank you for watching this video. Um, I really loved all the comments on the last uh, video. They were so kind and so sweet. Thank you so much uh, if you're watching again for the second time. This is my second episode of my knitting podcast and for this episode I'm hoping to show you um, the bit of progress that I've made since last time and um, basically go through a bit of my yarn stash and some new acquisitions and talk a little bit. Um, yeah, so uh, for those who didn't watch the first video, again, my name is Olivia. I live in Toronto, Canada, and I started knitting in January this year. Um, this knitting journey has been kind of really exciting. I basically just like to throw myself headfirst into whatever I'm doing, so I bought um, the best needles I could find. I bought so much yarn and I've been learning more about yarn and more about um, knitting in general along the way. It's been a very interesting few months and yeah I decided I wanted to join the community because all I do is watch silently. I barely even comment <laughs> so I was like let me make my voice heard. So here I am. Thank you for joining with me. Um, okay so we'll get right into works in progress. So from last episode, you'll remember this sweater. It's the Paloma sweater from Espace Gicot. And I had just finished doing all of the raglan increases and I was having such a hard time um, getting myself to knit in the round for the body. Like it just seemed so daunting to me. This is my first sweater. I've never knit a sweater before. And um, I got myself to do it. So here we are. This is the full body of the Paloma sweater. It's very lovely. It has a twisted rib for the neck. It has a twisted rib for the hem as well. It's two inches on the hem. And it has a twisted rib continuing from the neck down the uh, arm of the sleeves. You can see that. So now I'm just on Sleep Island. There have been a couple of times where I was going to pick it up to knit the sleeves. Um, but I felt like I wanted to kind of get some other projects started. But I definitely feel like I will be finishing this probably this week, which is so exciting. I've never finished like a sweater before. Like I would buy this sweater in a store personally because I'm obsessed with sweaters and I have so much I buy them constantly which is part of the reason why I wanted to start knitting. So I knit this sweater um, with Briggs & Little um, Durasport in natural white um, and with a mix of um, Drops Mohair Kid Silk in I believe it's natural white as well or just white. Um, the mix is really, really beautiful. I'm really in love with the um, Briggs & Little Durasport. It looks just like this. And there's some of the information, if you can see it. So because it comes in hanks, I learned the hard way that you can't just, um, like, turn this into a ball by yourself like it's very difficult I think the one night that I had tried on the first time that I did it and it took so many hours that the very next day I used um Amazon unfortunately to buy a yarn ball winder the very first time that I used the yarn barn yarn ball winder um, I did not do it correctly. I just assumed like, yeah, you turn the crank. What could be harder than that? And um, it was hard because I was turning it the wrong way and I made such a mess of the hank. <laughs> I had to start all over and it basically ended up taking the same amount of time as when I did it by hand, which was hours. So for the third, I'm pretty sure this is 
no this is actually still the second hank i've the sweater is huge but it's only used um one and a half hanks of the yarn which i think is incredible because i'm, I'm on like maybe my fourth ball of um of the mohair this is my fourth one so i think it's kind of insane how far these are going for the sweater i definitely will probably only need one more for the sweater and then i'll have i ordered six when i bought them so i'll be able to make essentially a second sweater from the six which i think is crazy um so yeah the yarn ball winder i got the hang of it the third go around and um i will be reading the instructions on everything i buy and <laughs> how i had to read the instructions and learn that you have to turn it counterclockwise etc i'm in the market for a swift because i'm i think that was a huge part of my problem the second time that i tried to use the yarn ball winder um we're learning lessons and getting used to it um i think i mentioned in the last episode but the stitch holders that i'm using to hold my sleeves um are from amazon as well um yeah so this sweater is going really well i'm very excited this sweater is what basically sparked my love for the briggs and little Dewar sport um it just pairs so well and honestly it's not itchy like feeling on the skin it's a natural 100 percent wool and it is pretty rustic like you have to pick out um the straw as you go along but i'm finding that it's so soft in the sweater and the pairing with the mohair is really beautiful so um if you'd like to try canadian yarn if you haven't already please try the briggs and little <laughs> i haven't tried the other um weights so this is a fingering weight but give it a go if you like fingering weight if you like 100 percent wool i'm uh i've heard good things about how it blocks um i think in uh, knitting tradition inga's uh used it and she said it blocked really well so i'm excited to see how that turns out um i started <laughs> Uh, my second work in progress, which is literally just the bottom of my second songbird mitten. If you'll recall from last episode, um, I showed you the first one that I have almost completed. I'll show it again just for anybody maybe who's new. This is the songbird mitten um, by Erica Hauser, I believe her name is. It's such a beautiful beautiful pattern um i tried to finish this i tried to get into doing the thumb and i was a few rounds in and something just wasn't working so i ripped it out i still had my um my stitch holder scrap yarn in thank god so i'm going to try again <laughs> because I do really want to finish it. I just, something was going wrong and I was like, I don't want to like only put 40% into this and like get it wrong. And I put so much hard work into the body of the mitten. I don't want to like just mess up on the thumb and like forget about it. I'd rather do it properly. So that's why I started the body of the second one. And hopefully once I get, um, I don't know, back into color, cause I, it's been a while since I did the first one. It's been at least, I want to say, like two or two and a half months. So once I get back into the swing of doing color work, then hopefully the thumb will come a little bit easier to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping. Um, yeah. So that's going well. I'm excited to have that. And I have a few more color work um projects planned. I plan to do some color work mittens um, for a friend. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited about that. Once I finish these, and I have a deadline because I have to get those to her by her birthday. So, so, <laughs> um, and then my third and last, I guess technically it's not a work in progress, is it? This is a finished object. It started out being the um, the top from Girly Knits. Um, I don't quite remember what it's called, 
but it's like a simple top. It started out being that when I followed the amount of stitches for cast on and then as I got up to a part where they started doing increases, I decided I simply did not want to do that. <laughs> and so I decided, you know what, screw the pattern, we're going off the cuff and I decided to make a completely different top that has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> so here it is. It looks a bit weird off the body. What it is, is it's an asymmetrical top. And um, this bit here, when you have it on, it goes from about here and it goes across your body. It's a really cool um, visual effect and I don't know if you've been seeing it but asymmetrical um, tops are pretty popular, trendy right now so I was like um, let me go ahead and try that. So I did and it worked really well and um, hopefully I can put a picture of myself uh, in the top here and you can see how it works and how the strap just sits across it sits really nicely. I'm very happy with this top. I knit this in Drops Paris in Off-White. Um, I do have a ball of that here so I can show you. Super small and cute. It's 100% cotton and this is a worsted or Aran weight. One of the two. Um, yeah, I ordered 10 of these balls. I believe it took me two and a half to do this top and I have every intention to knit a pair of shorts to match it. My issue is that because it's cotton, I don't find it has very much stretch unless it's ribbed. And I haven't seen any patterns for ribbed shorts. I did start one pattern and I've kind of put it to the side and I'm not, I won't even show you because it's like this much work and I don't know that I'll continue it because I feel like I won't be able to get them on my body. <laughs> so I just, just kind of put that to the side until I find uh, a pattern for shorts that I'm confident in because I don't want to put all the work in and then I can't put them on. That would be really disheartening and so sad that I could spend that time knitting other things that will fit me. <laughs> so yeah, that's this. And um, to the point of like these tops being trendy right now, um, I'm and basically to the point of why I started knitting is because I'm kind of not buying any clothes this year. I made a decision to not um, purchase any fast fashion or from any like first-hand realtor. That's definitely not the word. Retailer. <laughs> and so I was like, everything that I have is going to be something that I make or something that I buy secondhand. And that's essentially why I threw myself into knitting the way that I did was because I love knit items. So I said to myself, if I can learn to knit and I enjoy it, then I will make everything that I want and um, it'll be slow fashion <laughs> and handmade because I'm making it and I will only make things that I really want. So I won't just be purchasing like fruitlessly and consuming mindlessly. Uh, that was the idea. I've stuck to it. It's July. I have not been anything firsthand. Um, yeah, it's going really well. So I love that I'll have at least one new sweater for for um, fall. And then I have the cardigan that I finished last week. I have a number of tops that I did that you see in the last episode and socks. I'm going to get back into sock knitting. Um, I had a really lovely comment who recommended um, a certain video to follow for sock knitting on the last episode. So I'm going to be doing that and getting back into sock knitting for fall. Um, yeah, so on that note, I did say in the last episode that I wanted to kind of introduce <laughs> introduce you guys to the yarns that I've been really loving um, since I started. So when I first started, I was really obviously into acrylic yarns. I feel like they're really accessible. You just get them from Michaels and 
you know, there you go, you start knitting. Um, but now that it's been quite a few months, I've gotten really into natural yarns and um, I'm always very into natural colors. So that's mainly what you'll see reflected in my choices here. Um, so yeah, these are my acquisitions. If you are not interested in seeing acquisitions, then I guess I'll see you next time. Hopefully you'll come back um, to see episode number three when it comes out. Um, yeah, if you are into acquisitions, then let's get into it. So as I said, I bought a sweater's quantity, which to me means six, of um, the Briggs & Little uh, Durasport in the natural white. What I also did was I bought a sweater's quantity of that same yarn in a color called Fawn. So this is Fawn. Um, I think it's gorgeous. I'm hoping that it will work really well with my skin tone um, for whatever sweater I choose. Um, at first, I was going to choose um, the Sunday sweater by Petite Knit, but I'm thinking I might do another Espace Chicot sweater with this. Yeah, so this is Fawn. I have six of those, 100% wool, fingering weight. I do have this uh, weight of Briggs & Little, Briggs & Little Heritage. I believe this might be a... It's two ply. Is that worsted? Or DK? I, I don't quite remember right now, but this is the color magenta. It is crazy bright and super fun and beautiful. I'm very much obsessed with it. And I plan to pair this with another sweater's quantity of um, Drops Mohair Kid Silk that I bought. So I'm thinking that these two will work very nicely together to give me a really plush, beautiful, bright sweater. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to see how those work together. So I have six of these. I believe I have maybe five of these. And I'm thinking of doing um, a sweater by Petite Knit, actually, with the pink color. I think that one will be the Sunday sweater. I just want it to be something like spongy and like squishy and beautiful. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, to mix with Fawn, I got this, which is beige. So I'm thinking that these two will go really nicely together. Make something really fluffy and beautiful. So I got five of those. Then, I also got this. This is a mohair viscose mix. I bought this on Etsy from a shop called Knit Home Studio. I bought two skeins of this and each one is about 1300 yards. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these. My I thought I was going to use them right away. And I simply don't know what to do. Like, I'm not sure if I should pair it with something or if I should double them up and make um, kind of like a light, sulky sweater. Um, and I think I did a bit of a swatch, which is why I have some loose thread here, um, to see how I liked it doubled. And it's okay. I just feel like I get so caught up um, and I don't want to frog a project, so I kind of just want the project that I start to be the project that, like, I do with a yarn. And that kind of stops me from starting sometimes, unfortunately. So hopefully I can find a project to use these for because I really, really love the color. I really love neutrals, as I said. And it's so fluffy, and I think it would be a great transition period if I or a uh, piece sorry if I find something to use it for like it would be fluffy enough for a bit of cold and wind but light enough for you know a bit of a warm day so we'll see if I can find something I'm not sure if you have any suggestions I know everyone's been knitting the um one skein ranunculus however I'm not super interested in the way that that 
shirt, sweater, t-shirt looks. And I'm um, very much into intentional knitting. So I'm not just going to knit something because it's popular. Like I want to genuinely love the product because I, I guess it goes in the same vein as my like not mindless consuming uh method for this year i don't just want to mindlessly knit things i want the things that i knit to be like purposeful and i want them to be loved by me and i, I would say i am a little bit of a selfish knitter i don't quite want to knit for other people unless it's something where i'm like i'm knitting this for you end of story which happens but other than that like i want to love the things that I knit because I put so much time and effort and love into them and I want to be able to enjoy them okay so moving on with acquisitions I bought so much cotton yarn when I say so much I want you to understand that I bought over 70 skeins of cotton yarn um the place where I get all of my cotton yarn and all of my um like mohair is called wool warehouse it's in the uk they have really great shipping rates to canada and everything always comes like in a week or a week and a half it always comes in the beautiful little um organza bag <laughs> it's not a little bag there's so much yarn in here and i got literally three bags full of cotton yarn it took three separate um shipping like containers to get this to me <laughs> so i bought um drop saffron in this color i believe it's called brown yes it is brown number 23 i bought saffron as well in beige and saffron by the way is just like a fingering weight if i am correct I bought it in beige. I bought um, Drops Muscat. This is called Clay. Ooh. And it has more of a sheen to it. Um, as you know, I bought Drops Paris. And this is in Off-White. I have another shade of Muscat, which is in Light Beige. And the Muscat is a, is a DK weight. So the Paris is about a, a finger, incorrect. <laughs> the Drops Paris is about a um, worsted to an Aran weight. The Drops Muscat is about a DK. And the Drops uh, Saffron is about a fingering weight. So that's why I have so many of all three of them. Um, I bought Muscat in bright white and I bought um, more of the Paris as well in this color called dirty old pink dark old pink <laughs> dirty it's dark old pink and they also have one called light old pink which is a bit different but yeah so that's dark old pink and I got muscat in a deeper beige and I got saffron in an off-white. So for each one of those, I got either five to ten because I'm planning on doing a bunch of summer knits with those. Um, hopefully I can input some of those photos, the things I'm thinking of, knitting, mainly Pinterest items. So I'm thinking like knit sets, tops and bottoms with shorts and a tank top. I'm thinking knit bras. I'm thinking um, knit vests, just really cute little things. And I'm also thinking, especially for some of the beige colors, the beige tones, um, to do those really sweet little like knit bags. Um, I'll put a picture in here as well in case you don't know what I'm talking about. I believe most of those are crocheted. So, and I have a few um, patterns from some books that I got on my little library app. And I took little screenshots. And so I'll be making hopefully some cute little bags with the cotton yarn as well. 
and so that's why I got so many colors <laughs> and the various different weights just so that I could make sure um, I'm getting the look that I want to because um, yeah I just really love knit sets that's one of my favorite things in this world is a knit set and if I could knit faster and knit like a knit dress and knit pants and just everything I would my work in progress section would be very long if I could knit as fast and as much as I wanted to. <laughs> um, okay, the only other colors I have to show you, um, I got this Drops Kid Silk um, Mohair in a green, and I'm forgetting the name. Dark green. How simple. In dark green, I want to make such a sumptuous sweater out of this <sighs> I haven't gotten the yarn yet because seriously I clearly have a lot of projects that I'm like raring to go on so I haven't bought the um yarn wool yarn that will go with it soon <laughs> um I also have the kit silk in chocolate and I was thinking if I paired this with Vaughn, it would be a totally different look, but it would be so rich and deep and they might really work well together. So we'll see, I'll do maybe a, a swatch, whatever I get started on that sweater and um, see if the Vaughn pairs better with the chocolate or with the beige, which one I don't know yet. And then one thing that I think was an impulse buy um, when I bought it was the kids look in this burgundy tone um if I could remember the name I think it's no I don't remember it but it's uh, color number 36 if for some reason this intrigues you <laughs> and um, I don't know what to knit with that. So that might be sitting in my stash for a while um, because I have no idea what to do with it. And then another color that I only have, I think, two and a half skeins of is um, the Kid Silk in Curry. It really is a lovely, lovely color. I used it to knit my mom a vest, which actually I have not shown you guys. Um, it's beautiful. If I were to attempt, let's say, the famous ranunculus, I feel like I would do it with the curry color because I have two and a half skeins and I feel like it would use it up brilliantly. Who knows? I could be tempted, but I have a lot of stuff on my plate right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so I believe that's all of the yarn acquisitions that I wanted to show you. The m most recent ones were all the cotton. The other ones I just have had sitting and waiting until I could show you. But I swear I didn't buy all of these at once. Like it's been it's been a couple of months now. Um so yeah. Um if you have any thoughts on intentional knitting, if you have any thoughts on selfish knitting or consumerism, I would love <laughs> consumerism in general. I would love to chat with you in the comments about it because I really do think that this hobby is not only a great way to spend time and to like it's kind of meditative but also it's a really great way to offset um like the need and desire to always be buying clothes and sometimes I feel when you do buy an item once you get to a certain place in let's say knitting or sewing or crocheting you're kind of like okay well I could have like put this together with thrifted fabric or something like that's how I feel essentially about like my sewing um so yeah if you have any thoughts on that I would love to hear them I'm really glad that you were able to spend this time with me I hope that you'll tune in for the next video as well thank you for sharing your afternoon your evening your night and hopefully we can see each other again soon mm -hmm.